Gilbert Burns on the Show Me the Money podcast responds to Joaquin Buckley calling him out. Gilbert says that if he's offered the fight, he'll say yes. Let's do it. You know, I, the way I see like I'm I'm not in the situation to, to, to call anyone out or to pick and choose. Okay, I'm number, what, six? I think six right now. But, bro, I don't care. I think I'll be... I still have recovered for a couple of little injuries, you know? Uh, undisclosure, but a couple... <laughs> couple little injuries uh looking forward to be back in august but i saw they have the one in the sphere uh, on september that's the one that i'm looking forward to <laughs> fight on that one but yeah i like it. i think he looked good he fought good he beat luke and now he beat uh who's his balavri that guy didn't show up i was i was waiting for this guy to show up he didn't show up so i don't know if they send me i'll say yes not <laughs> I never said no to a fight. I'm, I'm not planning on start doing it. Mark Coleman visits his childhood home for the first time since it burned down. What's up, everybody? At my house for the first time, two months. Two months since I've been here. Wow, man. Tom, we can rebuild it? Yeah, we can. Duct tape? Dad's favorite. Let's go. Oh, man. Ooh. Real quick. Where's the hallway? I'm out of Dad's bedroom back there. I didn't still live here, but I still had a bedroom. Whoa. Yeah, there's my bedroom. Found that on the ground. Didn't get burned too bad. Didn't get burned. Some other cool stuff. But that's it. Have a good day. Life is good. Tomorrow's not promised. Get started. Sober's cool. Carnival died nice says your tennis him house for life. Who's in? Jorge Masvidal blames Nate Diaz for their boxing match being moved from June 1st to July 6th. As you guys know, June 1st is UFC 302. Jorge says that Nate's a f***ing idiot. Speaking to ESPN, Jorge said you don't want to go up against other dates and other fight events, especially you don't want to go up against the UFC. So from the beginning, I was trying to switch the date. Nate's a f***ing idiot. He was adamant about staying on that date because he's not a UFC employee no more and saying I don't have to do nothing for the UFC and this and that. It just doesn't make sense, especially when I know Nate thinks he's a boxer now because he boxed the Jake Paul guy, but he's not a boxer. He doesn't have a boxing fan base. The fan base that he has is from MMA, from UFC. So why go up against our own fan base? Me as a promoter, I'm thinking I don't even want to do it. I know a lot of fight fans would buy both or watch both events, but in my opinion, why even do it if there were dates that weren't conflicting? I don't like that another month and a week got added to this already long training camp. In hindsight, it doesn't really matter because I'm making the transition from one sport to another. So the more time I get to practice and perfect my craft and sharpen my tools, it doesn't hurt me or bother me the least bit. Now, Nate Diaz is a somebody that does bother me and I want to f him up. We could have had this fight at an earlier date, but this guy's such a f***ing diva and a f***ing coward that he wouldn't want to fight in Miami, didn't want to fight in Texas because things didn't go his way in Texas when he fought Jake Paul, didn't want to fight in New York, didn't want to fight in California unless it was in his hometown. I'm here pent up, frustrated, training my ass off every day just to get in there with this guy and f***ing hurt him. Charles Oliveira lists his top 10 fighters on TikTok. Ranking of the UFC. Lembrando que esse bagulho aqui é uma bosta, ó. Vou colocar esse 9. Em 10. Porra, tio. Esse ficou melhor aqui, né? De 10 que eu fiz, esse aqui foi o que ficou mais ou menos, entendeu? Eu, José Aldo, Alex Pereira e assim por diante. Marcha no que é, cara. O resto foi foda. Stipe Miocic discusses whether or not he was afraid of fighting Francis Ngannou. Do you go into that fight thinking or fearing Francis Ngannou at all? Oh, no, I mean, I don't fear anyone. That's the only person I fear is my wife. <laughs> you start fighting, you're nervous as I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, like, I'm really good. I would be so nervous, but then it's like riding a bike. The more times you do, the easier it gets. So now, like, when I fight, like, I'm nervous, but it's like a good nervous anticipation of what's going to happen. It's not me, it's not anyone else. Like, if I up, I 
up or to try to get caught. There's nothing I can do about it, so I'm out there and we're gonna swing. Alex Bejeda pranks his kids with a fake bear costume. Following the announcement of Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades, Tom posted this video addressing John Jones. Well, I've made it pretty clear that I want to fight Jones. I'm not going to go out my, uh, I'm not going to start acting like someone that I'm not. Do you know what I mean? I, I spoke to John Jones online, spoke to John Jones privately, spoke to John Jones personally, publicly. There's not a lot more that I can do. John Jones is playing games. He doesn't want the fight. I'm not going to start acting like someone I'm not just to get views and get attention and all that stuff. I want to be true to myself. I, uh, you know, I want to fight the best people in the world and hopefully, fingers crossed, one day that'll interest John. But right now, he's interested in fighting 42 year old Steve Pay. So um, there isn't a lot to say about that, really. John Jones gave his reaction to this. On X, John wrote, I wouldn't be surprised if Curtis won. I've seen scenarios like this time and time again. Dude prematurely drinking his own Kool-Aid ends up with a huge piece of humble pie. I mean, if Sergey can touch Tom that easy, I'm sure Curtis can too. When Curtis decides to go, he's a lot faster than people realize, and he hits hard. A few well-timed shots in that strong top game, it could be a long night for old Tommy boy. Either way, I'll be watching. Excited to have some additional footage. A fan replied, you want Curtis to win for your sake. John says, sure, if I'm being completely honest, I always root for the Americans, especially American wrestlers. At the end of the day, no matter who wins, Curtis is no walk in the park either. The only lane I've ever known, the fast one. I know no other speed. Can't remember the last time I wasn't at the big boy table. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from The Eagle Has Landed. It says it's pathetic that Tom is defending an interim belt before Jones defends the quote unquote real belt. The second one says, imagine Leon eye pokes him again. And the final one's from Mind of Patrick. It says Aspinall out here trying to make history with the record for most interim title defense. Defenses. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.